good afternoon. I'm very happy to present for you about Martucci, a romantic Italian composer that I, uh, I'm now researching a lot of. Uh, so let's start by uh, seeing today's outline of my presentation. It's divided into three parts. After an introduction, um, the first part will cover Martucci's historical information and his value uh, in the music history and why I decided to uh, spend a lot of energy and, uh, and work to research and sharing his music. And the second part will focus on one piece, the Tarantella Opus 44, number six. Uh, and at the end of the presentation, I will also perform uh, the entire piece for you. So um, how all this research started was in 2019 when I realized that I was not playing many Italian composers in my repertoire and my concerts, so I wanted to research more. So um, in 2020, I presented a lecture on, uh, it was titled, A Journey Throughout Four Centuries of Italian Repertoire uh, for Keyboard, that was divided into three parts, The Rise of the Piano, Piano Music in the 1800s, and Italian Pianism in Modern Times. And it was when researching for Italian composer uh, pianist from the Romantic period that I encountered for the first time the name of Martucci. And since that moment, after studying and playing and reading more of his music, um, the interest in studying him uh, grew a lot and I became very passionate. And um, so that's how everything started. And uh, let's now... Uh, talk about his life a little bit, but I wanted to share how I discovered. So uh, I'm from Italy, and the first thing that I wanted to do, since I wanted to research about Martucci, was to go and visit his home place. So I went to Capua, where he was born. These are some pictures of, of him. We have him at a uh, young age, middle age, and that is one of the last pictures that we have of him. Uh, actually, he died when he was only 53 years old. Um, it's interesting to notice in the picture on the right, at the top you can see two portraits. One is Beethoven, the mm -hmm. top left, and one is Mozart, just next to it. This will be very, very important to keep in mind for later. So this is what I called musical genealogical tree of Martucci. So we can see um, his composition teachers on the right and the um, piano teacher on the left. So he was a piano student of Beniamino Cesi, who was the student of Talberg. Um, Talberg was in Naples for the end of his life and Beniamino Cesi was from Naples and he became one of the favorite pupils of Talberg. And Martucci studied piano with him. And on the other side, Martucci studied composition with Paolo Serrao, whose teacher links back to Clementi. So we have a really wonderful connection. And among Martucci's students, we have to remember Giovanni Anfossi, that was the teacher of Michelangeli, uh, and among the composition student of Martucci, Respighi. So this is me in front of Martucci's statue in Capua, the place where he was born. And I want to start um, diving into his life and introduction, um, introducing to you Martucci by reading this plate that is in front of uh, Martucci's birthplace. So the plate says, in this house was born on January 6, 1856, Giuseppe Martucci of musical art, passionate worshipper, and most pure advocate, great pianist, great orchestral conductor, was to the Italian spirit an unsurpassed interpreter of excellent foreign musical artists. Great composer in the skillful instrumental polyphony, he continued the high examples which came from beyond the Alps. The conservatories of Bologna and Naples drew from his leadership improvement and honor. Equal to his intelligence, he had a sweetly austere soul. He died in Naples on June 1st, 1909, 
in the birth of the years in the height of glory. Capua, that is the place where he was born, maternally proud of such a citizen, placed this memory on him on the fifth anniversary of his, of his death. I highlight some words that they will come back later, so for now let's move on. And the desire to follow the path that Martucci made brought me to Bologna. And this is me in front of Bologna's uh, apartment and place where Martucci was living. And in this play is written, in this house lived Giuseppe Martucci, composer, pianist and orchestral conductor, pioneer of the symphonic awakening in Italy, animator of the musical life in Bologna, director of the conservatory from 1886 to 1902. In Bologna, there is also a curious fact that I want to share with you. Um, one of Martucci's favorite composer and his contemporary was Brahms. And Brahms was in Italy uh, when, uh, actually was, came to Bologna when Martucci was there. And this is two pictures of uh, the one on the left is actually on the right, you can see the building, and that was the hotel where Brahms was living, was uh, staying. And uh, so Martucci met Brahms uh, in this occasion, and there is an um, interesting story in which it says that Brahms didn't know Italian, couldn't speak it, Martucci didn't know German. So they just sang to each other the most beautiful melodies from Beethoven mm -hmm. symphonies, Mozart sonatas, <laughs> and so. And uh, uh, Martucci knew Brahms' music. So uh, there is this quote from uh, one of biographer friend of Brahms that was there at the moment at that time, and it said that Brahms said to Martucci that he understood the German music more than many other German composers. So this is an interesting fact. Let's now um, start to understand Martucci's value. So from the plate that we just read, we understood that Martucci was pianist, composer, conductor, director of musical institute, and artistic director of concert seasons. He had a huge repertoire from Ramon, Bach, Scarlatti, to his contemporaries, Brahms, Wagner, Stanford and Debussy, for example. He was the first to play or conduct many of these composers for the first time in Italy. So at the time, in Italy, the majority of the concerts were um, presenting opera or selection from arias from operas, not really much instrumental music. But Martucci really wanted to raise the level of instrumental music in Italy. And that's why he had this mission to um, share with the Italian audience all these great masters of instrumental music. So he was the first that performed Beethoven sonatas and symphonies to the Italian audience, the first that conducted Brahms symphonies, uh, many Mozart works, Chopin piano works, Liszt etudes, and really for the first time in Italy. He uh, toured all over Europe as a concert pianist when he was very young. This is a quote from a famous music critic after hearing Martucci's recital in Milan that Martucci uh, performed in 1875. Let's remember that he was born in 1856, so he was very young. He said, a success surpassing any you can remember since Rubinstein. And as a composer, Liszt heard some of his music and he called him a perfection Scarlatti. Now, he said it in French, so the word perfection we can also think as a modern Scarlatti. And this is another quote from Malipiero that is another later great Italian composer that said that after hearing Martucci's Second Symphony, that was the beginning of the Renaissance of non-operatic Italian music. So his style, composing style, have both facets of neoclassical elements and romantic elements. He was the leader and director of several music institutions, for example, the Conservatory of Naples and of Bologna, in Bologna. And yes, he was responsible for this symphonic awakening 
and uh, we are gonna see soon uh, programs of concerts uh, that he presented to the Italian audience. So this is the first program that I wanted to show you. This is a piano recital that Martucci performed in 18, oh, in there is a mistake, 77, not 87, in uh, Casale Monferrato. That's the outside of the building, the black and white painting is around the time when he performed and on the right is the picture of the theater looks today and that's the inside of the hall. Let's read the program. So the program is divided into two parts. Both parts started with a symphony with full orchestra. Now symphony, not an entire big symphony, just like a piece with for orchestra as an introduction. And then we have Martucci perform four of his pieces with a colonnade by Weber. And in the second part, Chopin Nocturne lists Etude, another of his works, and then list March from the Pannhauser, that is a Wagner opera, so it's a transcription by list of a Wagner march. So already we see some names like Chopin Nocturne lists Wagner. These are composers that were not played at all in Italy. Now this poster is very important because you see it's written Nuova per l'Italia, that means new for Italy. This was the first performance of Wagner's Tristan in Italy and was conducted by Martucci in Bologna in this wonderful theater. This is another concert from uh, 1899. He performed in Turin in the hall of the conservatory. After four of his works, we have Rameau, Minuet, Scarlatti Jig, Beethoven Sonata, Bach Concerto for Keyboard and or Orchestra, and then a selection from Chopin Preludes and the B minor Scherzo. These two concerts were performed by Martucci in Trieste and that is the hall at the time and only a few years ago it got attacked by fire so it is completely destroyed unfortunately today. Um, so the first program on the left is a symphonic program. We have Beethoven Overture from the Prometeo, Martucci's own piano concerto, Brahms' third symphony and Wagner Prelude uh, from uh, one of his opera. The second program in the same hall is more a chamber concert, all music by him. We have his second piano trio, four pieces, for solo piano, a quint and then the piano quintet that is in four movements. This last program that I want to show you is from London, from the Philharmonic Society. It was the 1899, and we see at the bottom conductor is said Sir Alexander Mackenzie, but the highlight uh, is uh, Symphony in D minor by Martucci, and it, you cannot read, but it's written conducted by the composer. So Martucci was there and he was conducting in London. Now, to show some evidence of Martucci's legacy, I want to show you um, this program that is from 1911, so uh, only, only two years after Martucci's death, where Mar Mahler was conducting at Carnegie Hall with the Philharmonic Orchestra, and he was conducting Martucci's Piano Concerto. This was the last concert that Mahler ever conducted. And 100 years later, in 2011, Riccardo Muti, to honor the centenary of the death of Mahler, presented with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra the same program. So once again, we have Martucci, second piano concerto. And on the right, I put a cover of two CDs. Uh, the top one, conducted by Arturo Toscanini, and we have Martucci's second symphony, and La Canzone dei Ricordi, that is a song cycle, really similar to Mahler song cycles, similar in, form and conception. 
And then uh, at the bottom, we have another CD cover by Riccardo Muti, in which we have the same song cycle and the piano concerto. So we are now in part two of my presentation in which we are going to discuss Martucci's Tarantella, Opus 44, number six. Now let's start by discussing what is a Tarantella. So the Tarantella's name has its roots from the city of Taranto in the south of Italy and from a spider. It's called Tarantola or Licosa Tarantula spider. So, um, in the 16th or 17th century, the bite of this spider was popularly believed to lead to a hysterical condition known as tarantella or tarantism. Later, this tarantella became a dance that was used to cure this, uh, this condition. And it's very interesting that on the right, this is a curative musical score from the 16th the 17th hundred, and in the, at the top is called, is written an antidote. So it's an antidote for the, this bite, and it's a musical antidote. So imagine going to the pharmacy and, and say, I got this bite from a spider, can you give me something? And they give you a score. So you need to dance very fast. The, the reason was that by dancing very fast in this uh, specific way, you were gonna uh, get rid of the poison uh, through perspiration and sweat. Mm -hmm. So that's how everything started. Later, this Tarantella dance became a very, very special dance, Southern Italian dance, and the connection with its origin became, I mean, remained only in its name. Um, but usually in this dance, we have circular movements, usually it's in 6 8, very fast accompanied by mandolins, guitar, accordions, and tambourines. Now, among composers that wrote Tarantella, we have, we can name Rossini, Chopin, Liszt, and Rachmaninoff, among others. Martucci composed his Opus 44 in 1880, his form of six pieces, the last of which is a Tarantella. And at the end of his life, he orchestrated both number three and number six. This is one program that I showed you earlier, and there is, he performed the same piece over there. And let's start by looking at the music and analyze it a little bit. This is um, in G minor, very virtuosic in nature, and is a perfect example to show you the two sides that of Martucci style, so neoclassical and romantic. So the form of this piece is very classic sonata form. Uh, what is interesting is that in the first key area we have four different motifs or, or themes that I call the staccato theme, the legato theme, the circular theme, and the exuberant theme, in which we can see the neoclassical facet of him. And the second key area we can really see is romantic uh, side. We have then the development in which there is a collision between the, these two different aspects, and then recapitulation and coda. So I will now um, give you some examples. Um, we we'll go to the piano. And uh, so the piece starts like this. <laughs> So the traditional instrument that were um, performing and accompanied the, the tarantella dance. After which we have the 
legato team. So is, we have uh, now a change of, of style in which we have slurs, more air things of the expression. Uh, but the character is still very active. <laughs> After this legato team, we have this circular team that I call this way because it really reminds me of the movements of the dancer of the Tarantella dance. And we have this insistent repetition of short motifs that it sounds like this. <laughs> in preparation to the second key area. Now the exuberant theme sounds like this. <laughs> So now, this is an example of his neoclassical style. Now let's see, uh, after this uh, brief transition, we go from G minor to E flat major, and we have the beginning of the second theme uh, that sounds like this. atmosphere. Now we have uh, warmer sounds and beautiful lyrical melodies, so it creates really a, a great contrast with what we heard before. After a very similar transition of only four measures, we go from back to G minor from this E flat. <laughs> the Scarlatti reminiscence that Liszt were mentioning. We have these repeated notes. Or later. That, uh, that are really reminiscent of, the, of Scarlatti's style. And in all the development, we have this conflict between uh, the neoclassical and the romantic. Now, in, uh, one passage that I wanted to point out that is very interesting is this passage that is a, a transfiguration of the second lyrical theme that was... And now it becomes... So it's, it's completely transformed. At the end of the development, we have the first climax of the piece that um, it functions also as a retransition. And I will play for you. <laughs> second team is treated very differently. So the lyrical team in the exposition, play one more time. repeat 
of the retransition that had, we had at the end of the development, uh, and at the end of which we have the Neapolitan core. Now, let's remember that Martucci was uh, born in Capua, is very close to Naples, and uh, Tarantella, as we said, is a very, is a traditional southern Italian dance. So I think it's interesting to point out this, this special chord. So that passage at the end of the coda sounds like this. <laughs> for you the entire uh, Tarantella by Martucci and as a background I put this painting that shows Naples and the Mount Vesuvius, the volcano that is in Naples and some uh, Tarantella dancers. So I hope you enjoy Martucci Tarantella Opus 44 number 6. <laughs> Thank you. 
I mean, the majority that he wrote is for solo piano. Um, his last opus was opus 84, and there are some pieces with no opus number. I think he has like around, um, around 100 works, um, the majority of which for solo piano. And um, there are some easy repertoire. Uh, for example, his opus 44 is called Sonata Facile. That means easy sonata. Um, Opus 38 is also uh, not really demanding. There is a romanza facile, that also means easy roman romanza. Um, that also is, is very easy. So I think, I mean, he was a great teacher. So he composed also these pieces for his student. So um, yeah, there are, there are some materials. I didn't include it yet in my teaching, but I have those pieces that I'm sure um, I will use them for teaching materials. Yeah. Where can we find this music? So virtually everything is on Petrucci MSLP. Really everything. Um, there are I think two only opus number that there, there are not on MSLP and I, found, I try to search them in libraries something there is I cannot find any book. Uh, but those are only two exceptions so all of the other works is on MSLP. Yeah. Was most of his music published by Ricordi? Yeah, so he signed this contract with uh, Ricordi um, that was alive at the time. Um, so he had this uh, contract that all of his music uh, had to be published by Ricordi and um, like any other uh, pianist that wanted to perform his music had to pay like the rights to Ricordi as well. So yeah. Yeah. Do you have particular favorites from his works? Um, favorite pieces? Yes, I do. I'm just curious if you have favorite pieces from his works. Yeah, so um, the second piano concerto is really, really interesting. And um, so it was written before Rachmaninoff's, but there are really some aspects of it, both in the orchestration and in the piano writing, that are reminiscent of, of Rachmaninoff. So that's, that's definitely one of my favorites. Um, there is a Nocturne, uh, Opus 70, number one, that it was originally written for solo piano and was later orchestrated. So you can find online both versions, and that is gorgeous music. Um, so I would say those two are, let's say, my, my favorite among. Yeah, yeah. Are you saying that Rachmaninoff copied Petrucci's concert? What? Are you saying that Rachmaninoff copied? No, no, I'm not going. I, but but is <laughs> is uh, very is very fascinating. Yeah, it's interesting, and uh, even technical passages and chromaticism, uh, and then I find his his chromaticism to be very different than uh, German one. is is not as dark. Um, there is always some this brightness in it. So it's it's very interesting. Yeah. Were there other um, Italian composers? Composers, piano composers, at the same time as Martucci. So Sgambati uh, was um, his contemporary, and um, I didn't research a lot of on on Sgambati, but he's one of the other greatest piano uh, composer of that time uh, that there were in Italy, and he was also composing. He didn't write as much as as Martucci, but he also composed sim symphonic and. Uh, instrumental musics more than opera. Martucci never composed an opera. Um, 
although I admire Verdi, uh, that was also at the same time. Uh, so he really loved opera in general, but he's uh, recognized the lack of Italian instrumental music. So he wanted to fill that gap. Thank you for coming for me.